Mm, that's drunk. Hello and welcome to part two of this weird out of nowhere idea I came up with while doing yard work. It's about characters in 16-bit sports games that were somehow way, way better than everyone else. For instance, in part one, we covered Hakeem Olajuwon in NBA Live 96, Jeremy Roenick in NHL 94, Barry Sanders in the Madden series, and that Davison guy from NCAA basketball. Of course, we also had to give a special shout out to the most powerful athlete in any game ever, that being Bo Jackson in Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo Super Bowl. But many of you in the comments were quick to nominate plenty of other 16-bit video game athletes as well. I'll start with Alejo, number seven who plays for Brazil in International Superstar Soccer Deluxe. I got tons of comments about this guy, and yeah, I admit I don't play too many soccer games obviously, but yeah, in less than five minutes I could see this guy was the real deal. According to Game Facts, he's rated an 84, the highest in the game, where the average player is rated around like a 72 or 73. Apparently this guy was so popular in Brazil that people had custom jerseys made with his name and number. You gotta love that. There's even a guy that plays next to him named Gomez that's also ridiculously good. Hey, every Jordan needs a Pippin. So yeah, playing as Brazil in International Superstar Soccer Deluxe is almost unfair. They're one of those teams that's so good, they should be off limits if you're playing against the second player. And that's not all when it comes to Super Nintendo soccer games. There's also good old Super Soccer. You know, the game with Donald Trump on the cover. Yeah, I know that's probably Oliver Kahn, but still I can't help myself. In this game, there's a player on Argentina named Diego, who is meant to represent, guess who? Diego Maradona, the guy who led Argentina to the 86 World Cup and one of the greatest soccer players of all time. Again, this is another case where this dude is just faster and more agile than everyone else. So even if you suck at soccer games, it's still fun to play as Argentina and kick the crap out of everyone. Now here's one I felt really stupid about leaving off the first video. I already mentioned Bo Jackson in the Tecmo Bowl NES games, but what about Bo Jackson in college, specifically in Bill Walsh College Football? Yeah, that's right, he's actually in this game as a legacy player, so to speak, on the 1983 version of the Auburn Tigers. He's not quite as absurd as you're used to seeing, you can't quite run in circles around defenders, but hey, he's still a whole bunch faster than anyone else in the game. Plus, this is pretty much just an old school Madden game in college clothing, so it's real easy to go crazy and run up the score. There's another big one I missed in the first video, and it's Tom Chambers of the Phoenix Suns? Really? Yup, Tom friggin' Chambers has an unstoppable move in Lakers vs Celtics for Sega Genesis. Look, I remember Tom Chambers, and yeah, the guy had hops, but good lord, this game turns him into a spring-loaded version of Vince Carter. It's ridiculous. He's practically jumping from the three-point line. What's crazy about this move is that it works every single time. It's got a 100% success rate. You can score like 300 points doing this, and it might be the single most overpowered move in any sports game ever. Let's stick with the Genesis for a bit longer with David Robinson's Supreme Court. This game has a player named Air All Night, and it's one of my favorite discoveries since I started doing this channel thing. This dude is incapable of missing. As long as you're somewhat near the three-point line, you will hit every shot. The NBA record for most threes in one game is 14 by Klay Thompson, and I had 23 by the end of the first quarter, which adds up to a very nice 69 points. I wonder who would win in a one-on-one -on -one match between Air All Night and that Davison guy on North Carolina in NCAA basketball. Every once in a while I get a comment from someone saying, hey I suck at super tennis, you got any pointers? And the answer is always the same, pick John and a sweet beard and weirdly dark eyebrows and just stay on the baseline and pound the hell out of the ball with the B button and he'll hit cross court winners left and right. Don't bother with any top spin nonsense with the A button or any lobs or whatever, just practice a bit to get your timing right and you'll find pretty quickly that John is freaking unstoppable, he's like Rafa Nadal hitting bombs. If you play a circuit, occasionally you'll run into an opponent that tries the whole serve and volley crap and gets super aggressive, so you'll have to mix up your strategy and learn their patterns and such, but still, John is easily the strongest tennis player in the game. Alright, I gotta stir things up a bit here. I know Top Gear has a lot of fans in South America, so I'm just gonna say it. The red car is overpowered. In my opinion, it's way better than the other cars. Just hit a nitro right at the start of the race, fly past everyone into the top five, and after that it's just a matter of making sure you don't hit anyone that you've lapped. 
In addition to that, when you hit a downslope and hit a nitro at the same time, you can maintain well over 200 miles an hour easily for about 5 or 6 full seconds. You're not maintaining that speed with the other cars. Is it harder to control? Yeah, definitely. It gets crappy fuel efficiency too, but it has the highest top speed, and that's by far the biggest difference maker. You hit a straightaway on the red car, and you can make up a ridiculous amount of ground. Yeah, I know the white car has its fans, but there's definitely nothing overpowered about it, so what fun is that? Give me the red car any day. Finally, I'll end this with what else but Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. Yeah, I talked about this game in part one, but what I didn't talk about was the 2020 roster update made by Baron Von Lechter. It's only available through his Patreon, which I have linked in the description, but if you're a Griffey Baseball fan like I am, it's impossible to pass up. So who's overpowered in this edition? As much as I hate to admit it, the Yankees lineup is ridiculously good, with Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton supplying the lumber, and DJ LeMahieu and Glaber Torres getting on base ahead of them. And plus you've got Garrett Cole throwing 103 miles an hour as your number one starter. The best all-around player in the game is easily Mike Trout. He's got a 10 for power, 10 for hitting, 9 for speed, and 8 for fielding. So while the Angels may somehow suck in real life, they're also great to play as in the Griffey Baseball 2020 roster update. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!